Hi everybody, this video is looking at the process of DNA replication. Okay, so here we've got a section of a DNA molecule, and of course that DNA molecule forms a double helix. So some things to remember when we're going to be explaining the process. First of all, that the two strands of DNA run anti-parallel to one another. So we've got this strand here, as we move left to right, we're going three prime to five prime. And our other strand, as we go left to right, is going from five prime to three prime. So they run in opposite directions along the molecule. Our two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds between our base pairs. So the first thing that we have to do is you have to break those hydrogen bonds. And once we've broken the hydrogen bonds, we can then unwind the molecule and then we can start to uh, make our new strands using each of these original strands as a template. Okay, so here is our DNA molecule and I've used a colour for each strand. The enzyme that um, unwinds the double helix structure is DNA helicase. So DNA helicase will come in and it will unwind the molecule. So we've now, it was sometimes it's called unzipping it. So it breaks the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs so that it unzips. Again, remembering that we've got our three prime and five prime ends of each strand that are anti-parallel to one another. First thing that happens is that we have new nucleotides need to be added. So this strand here, the blue strand, is acting as our template DNA strand. And we're adding new nucleotides to make a new strand, a daughter strand of DNA. And because this strand is three prime at the end of the blue strand, the template strand, our new strand is going anti-parallel because it has to always join anti-parallel. So this will be five prime end and this will be the three prime end. It's anti-parallel to the template. So new nucleotides are added and they're added using the enzyme DNA polymerase. So that can just continue. New nucleotides can be added using the template strand as our template. On the other strand of DNA, though, we have a problem. If we were to just add nucleotides here, then this new strand would be moving from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. And that can't happen. DNA polymerase is not able to do that. DNA polymerase is only able to make a new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction of the new strand it's making. So if this is unable to happen, if the DNA polymerase can only make a new strand 5' prime to 3', prime, that means it has to go over here because the new blue strand that we're making, this is the 5' prime end of the new strand, this is the 3', prime. so we have to be going in this direction. So that's what happens. The DNA polymerase will add new nucleotides to make our new strand and it will move along like that. Now, of course, we've only unwound so far a small section. So the next thing that happens is that DNA helicase is going to unwind the next section of DNA and then the process can continue. So on this strand here, we're able to just move in that direction because the DNA polymerase is able to go from 5' prime to the 3' prime end of the new strand. But again, we have a problem with this strand down here, because this is the 5' prime end. We can't add on to this direction, because this would be going towards the 5' prime end, and we have to go towards the 3' prime end. So we make a section here. So we've made one section, and now we make another section. These sections are called Okazaki fragments. And they'll be made along the whole length of our new DNA strand in the direction of 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Those fragments have to be joined together using DNA ligase. And then again, the process can just continue. DNA helicase unzips it, DNA polymerase works in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction on both of the new strands. But on this strand here, 
it has to make Okazaki fragments and then DNA ligase has to join them together. The strand that works without the Okazaki uh, fragments is known as the leading strand. And the new strand that's made using Okazaki fragments is known as the lagging strand. So that process can just continue along the whole section that needs to be replicated, the whole molecule that needs to be replicated. And what we have now are two new DNA molecules. So we have to make sure that there are hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. So here we have one new, what we could call a daughter molecule, and we have another new daughter molecule. Both of them are identical in terms of the sequence of bases when you compare to the original parent DNA molecule, and they are also going to be identical to one another in terms of the sequence of bases. Okay, that's DNA replication. Thank you.